Welcome back, everybody. Backcountry Amateur Radio. My name is Eric, KI7WJP, Amateur Radio Call Sign. And WRFS 364 is my GMRS call sign. And I got that because it's much easier to communicate with my family with GMRS radios than FRS radios. Um, so today I'm going to talk about the Radiodity DB20-G, using it as a base station. And I'm going to show you how I can have it operational in just a matter of minutes. Um, out of the box, it is a phenomenal little package. It is, I mean, it's a small little box. It's a small little radio, but it has, so far in my tests, it's been very consistent in power output, uh, four to five watts low power, eight, eight watts medium, and 15 watts uh, high, high power. Um, I am feeding it to a J-Pole right now, a GMRS tuned J-Pole that's got an SWR of 1.3 to 1, um, which is phenomenal. So literally plug and play. Um, installing the Anderson power poles meant reducing a massive amount of cable. And in my vehicle, I can plug this right into the Anderson power poles that are installed already. Um, you know, it's just a 12 volt system. I can install the coaxial, which is in the car, I can simply screw that on and mount this to the little bracket and this is in my car and it's good to go. Um, Anderson power poles are on all of my radios, all of my, my bigger rigs, not, not handhelds obviously, but I also have adapters for them. So the adapters that I use are some one is a is a jumper with alligator clips that I can literally just attach directly to a battery, um, mind you a 12 volt battery, um, and I use that for any of my rigs if I need to in an emergency. And what's nice about that is I can carry this, I can carry these alligator clips and maybe a little jumper and extension, all with Anderson power poles. I can carry a magnet antenna, and if we have an emergency and I'm in a car that's not mine, this becomes a radio <laughs> that I can use in a matter of seconds. And it's a pretty small go bag with a radio communications plan. So you don't have to be in your vehicle all the time to have a radio for emergencies. Now, GMRS is probably not your most ideal uh, radio for emergencies, but at the same time, they work when cell phones don't. Um, it's just a matter of hoping, getting somebody on the other end. Um, there is a growth, obviously, this is why you're on this channel, of GMRS radios in the outdoor world. Whether you're overlanding, hiking, hunting, backcountry skiing, whatever it is, these radios are becoming more popular because they work so well for really clear communication between parties and groups. And the, the FCC license is only 70 bucks and it hopefully will soon go down to 35. But I encourage you to get a GMRS license. Uh, they're just fun to have. These radios are fun to use um, and they don't require any kind of testing. There's a learning curve in, involved. You have to install your antennas properly. You need to learn how your power supplies work, especially if you're doing a home installation. What's also really cool is this station can be set up in a backpack. Uh, you need to have an antenna that can handle the 15 watt output. But, Anyway, if you're interested in getting one of these radios or any Radiodity product, please click on the referral link below in my, in my description. Uh, that will give you a discount, uh, like 15%. Um, if you do buy something, that actually helps support what's going on here, uh, thankfully. Um, and also, if you do feel like supporting the channel directly, there's Buy Me A Coffee. There's a link in the description below for that as well. So um, anyhow, let's get into setting this up and and getting on the air with it. And then later tonight, which hopefully I'll have the wits about me to record it, at least part of it, we'll do a signal report and we'll do part of the net that we do on the uh, Wednesday night RADCOM FRS GMRS net. So, um, anyhow, Radiodity DB20G. As I was saying, I always install Anderson power poles. It just makes um, interface so much easier with all of my units. So I installed it on this and I cut off quite a bit of extra cable uh, the last thing you need is a bunch of extra cable on your entire system. It just gets in the way. So uh, once you get this installed, this thing is ready to go. And you can see the, the, the unit is still in the bag. So I put the bracket up 
because I wanted to have a quick in and out, but I also wanted to have this thing stable. It's a small, small radio. It doesn't have a lot of weight, so it doesn't stay in place super easy. Um, I did like to run the external audio. Just It does sound better to have a, an external speaker. So if you don't have one, consider getting one. And it doesn't have to be a fancy one. This is a CB1 that I think came from my truck stop. So this thing's ready to go. Here we are. This is channel 22 set at high power, WRFS 364, 15 watts, WRFS 364, medium power, 8 watts, low power setting, WRFS 364. All right, I did want to show the computer programming software. It is pretty basic. Um, but it works really well. I didn't have any glitches. I did manage to find a couple extra steps I needed to locate the comms ports. So go into device manager, locate your comm port, and then go up to the menu above in the software and set the comm port. And that's the one part that is missing from the instruction book, but they're going to fix that. This is Eric R. Is anybody on the air for a quick radio check before the net? Eric R, WRFS 364 at home in Heber. Uh, no traffic uh, for the net tonight. Good evening. Thank you, Eric. Larry K. All right, I, I closed out the audio here because I just wanted to focus on the S meter. That green bar, it shows full scale and it shows the other signals that aren't nearly as strong. WRFS 364, checkpoint 1. WRFS 364, checkpoint 2. WRFS 364, checkpoint 3.